Hey everyone, Mr. Tegmar here again, and this is part three of Moments, and where we're going to talk about rotational equilibrium. Remember in parts one and two, we learned of what a moment is, and we learned some really important concepts, uh, specifically that the force vector and the distance through which it acts have to be perpendicular. Uh, another word for perpendicular is orthogonal. You might also hear the term normal. It doesn't mean that um, it acts normal, it just means that it's perpendicular. So rotational equilibrium is an extension of what we've learned and we're going to extend this learning to be able to analyze a truss which is important in airplanes and bridges and cars and buildings and all kinds of structures. So let's get started. So just what is rotational equilibrium anyway? Well, you can read it here, and it gives you two cases. It's, it's the state of a body or a physical system that's unchanging rotational motion. The first case here talks about not rotating, and the second case says that, well, it can be rotating, but as long as it's at a constant speed. We're just going to consider an object that is not rotating at all. So if it's in equilibrium, we can apply uh, the following equation. So remember that this is called the Greek letter sigma, or capital sigma, and it means the sum of whatever is after that. So in this case, this case, it is the sum of the moments, and if it's in equilibrium, then it equals zero. So I just add up all of my moments, moment one, moment two, moment three, I could have a billion moments if I wanted to. The sum of all those things have to balance so that their sum equals zero. That is what rotational equilibrium means. Let's extend that a little bit farther and go through some examples. Well, we've all been on a playground and we've all been on a teeter-totter or a seesaw and what we want to find out is if we put something on there, like cute little teddy bears, right now they're balanced, but this one had a big breakfast, the one on the right. So we're going to move him, and we're going to, we want to figure something out here. If the little guy weighs 25 pounds, and he's four feet away from, remember this is called the fulcrum, he's four feet away, and the big fella here weighs 40 pounds, we want to determine how far does he have to be from the fulcrum. Well, let's apply that equation we just looked at. This, if it's balanced, the sum of all the moments equals zero. So m1, which is from the little guy, plus m2, which is from the big guy, those have to balance and equal zero. And we remember to apply our conventions where positive is counterclockwise, which would be from the first one. So that first teddy bear, the 25 pounder, that's going to be a positive moment. And the big guy, the 40 pounder, he's going to apply a negative moment. Another way to say that is M1 equals minus M2. Or D1 F1 equals D2 F2. Well, let's plug in our numbers and let's move everything back over to one side. So here we have from the first teddy bear, he weighs 25 pounds, he's four feet away. The second guy is 40 pounds and he's going to have a negative impact, so we put the negative sign there. We don't know how far he is, but all we have to do is apply some simple algebra. And so from the the 25 pound guy, we know we have 100 foot pounds, that's positive. And since we moved the 40 pounds and the D2 distance to the other side, we got rid of our zero. This is positive as well. So we just do some math. We divide each side by 40, remembering to write our units as we go along because this is a great double check for us. And we cross everything out. Multiply, divide, and we get our distance, D2, is two and a half feet. 
and we could use the same example uh, to figure out uh, if we if we knew d2 and we wanted to figure out what the force is so in other words if we didn't know f2 was 40 but we did know d2 we could do that as well it's the same process well we're getting closer now to trusses so let's take our uh, a beam and let's load it. We're going to call uh, the left side A, the right side B, and I was kind of a bad boy for Christmas and I got a 35 pound lump of coal. Well, I want to know what the forces are at A and B to support that uh, load, to support that gift. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to draw my free body diagram and I have a reaction force at A called uh, R sub AY or RAY. I don't know what that is. Also at B I have a reaction force called RBY. Well, let's find out what those are. But if I apply the sum of the forces in the Y direction, I have one equation and two unknowns. I can't do that, but what I can do is I can apply a moment. So I'm going to select point A to be my pivot point. Is it really my pivot point? No, it's not. But I can apply a force times a distance and do a moment balance to figure out what this force is at B. So let's do that. So the sum of the, the moments equals zero. So I have the moment from B plus the moment from C equals zero. And so I have DAB, which is the distance from A to B, which is 10 feet, times the reaction force at B. That is my moment B. That's this moment right here. That's going to be counteracted by the negative of the moment from C. This is also going to have a moment. So my DAC is 3 feet. So let's plug in our numbers. My only unknown then is the reaction force at B. So when I do the multiplication and do some division, cross out my units, I'm left with my reaction force at B is 10 and a half. Now I can apply the sum of the forces in the Y direction because I know that C is minus 35. I know that B is 10.5 uh, going up. And when I apply this equation and solve, plug in and solve, I end up with RAY is 24 and a half. So now a double check is if I add RAB, I'm sorry, RAY and RBY, they should add up to 35. And they do. Okay, this is the grand finale, and I'm going to go slow. Um, so follow along as best you can. What we have here is a simple truss and the truss is supported by rollers at point D and a pin at point A. It gives us the distances and all of the nodes are denoted with letters. So we have A, B, C, and D. And it also gives us the lengths of the beams which you can see down here in the box. So the distance from A to C is 24 feet. That's the DAC here and so on. So A distance from um, A to B, we don't really need to know that, but the distance from C to B is 12 feet. The distance from A to D is 24 plus 8, 32 feet. 
Well, let's add some forces. So if there's a force of 600 pounds going down, how do we solve this? What are the reaction forces? There's also a 500 pound force at B going to the right. So remember back from a, a previous presentation, we want to find what the reaction forces are at the pin and the roller. So remember a pin has two forces, one going in the y direction and one going in the x direction. We don't know what those are, but we want to calculate them. And then at D, that was a roller, and a roller only has one support or one force that's going up, and that's our dy. So that's our first step, is to replace those pin and roller supports with their reaction forces. So what we want to do to calculate the unknowns there, the green arrows, is we want to use our moment balance. So the best way to do it, we could choose D, but we would end up with some equa we would end up with one equation and two unknowns. The best place to choose to start is at A. So if I choose my pivot point at A, and again it's a theoretical pivot point, it's not really pivoting. But if I apply my moment formula, moment equals force times the distance, uh, so my force is RAY and RAX, but my distance from A to A is zero. So automatically those are discounted. So I will have uh, a moment from FB, I will have a moment from FC, and I will have a moment from RD. What does that look like? Let's solve for RDY. I apply my sum of the moments equals zero. That's where I start. So I have MD. That's going to rotate counterclockwise, so it's positive. Minus MB. So my force at B is going to make it go clockwise, so that's going to be negative. And the same thing for C. That's going to run a rotate counterclockwise. So that also is negative. So what this says is that the moment from D, or at D, is going to be equal to the moment sub from B plus the moment from C. Well, I want to make sure that I get my distances correct here. So remember that uh, the perpendicular distance for B is actually 12 feet. So let's let's apply our formula now. So in, our moment equals force times the distance. That's what we're showing here. So the moment for D is the distance DAB times our reaction force, our dy. On the other side, this is our moment for B. We have f of B, which is, we'll plug in our numbers here in a second, f of B times dc of B. And then our moment for C is the force at C times the distance from A to C. So when we plug in our numbers, we get, this is what we get, 32 feet on the left-hand side times RDY. Again, that's what we're trying to find. We don't know what that is, but we know all the other numbers. We know 12 feet times 500 pounds. Again, that's the moment from B. And then we apply 24 feet times the 600 pounds. That's this distance times this force. So if we look at that equation we have, and we multiply it out, we have a bunch of numbers and one unknown, our dy. Well, let's multiply that all out. So we have our dy times 32 on the left, and then we have 6,000 foot-pounds. That's 
our moment from B, and we have 14,400 foot-pounds, that's from C. We multiply everything out, cancel our units, and we end up with our dy is 640 pounds. Well, that's pretty interesting. That's more than 600 pounds here. We want to find out what these other forces are, so how do you think we might go about that? If you said apply the sum of the forces in the y direction, in the x direction, you would be correct. I'm going to let you figure that out. And this ends the part three, and we will continue this discussion.